Chapter 2, Section 3, Declaring Independence As the conflict between Britain and the colonies escalated, colonial leaders came together in Philadelphia to discuss options. The first meeting of this Continental Congress in 1774 had recommended boycotts and other actions to protest the Intolerable Acts. At the Second Continental Congress, held in 1775, after the battles of Lexington and Concord, delegates decided to form a new Continental Army. As a commanding general, they chose George Washington, a leading officer in the Virginia militia. The colonies had not declared independence, however. Most colonists still hoped for a peaceful solution. Colonists extend an olive branch. While the Second Continental Congress was in session, the war around Boston continued. In June 1775, the two sides clashed at the Battle of Bunker Hill. The British won the battle, but they paid a heavy price. More than 1,000 British troops were killed or wounded, while the colonial forces suffered 450 casualties. To some colonists, the high British casualties were proof that the British were not invincible. Still, Congress hesitated to break with Britain. In July 1775, it sent a petition to King George III, affirming loyalty to him, asking for help in addressing their grievances, and expressing hopes for a peaceful settlement. The center came to be called the Olive Branch Petition, because olive branches symbolize peace. However, the king refused to receive the petition, having heard the news of Bunker Hill. He proclaimed that the colonists were in open and avowed rebellion, and that Britain would bring the traitors to justice. Thomas Paine writes Common Sense. Not all colonists supported the Olive Branch Petition. To some, it made no sense to ask for peace while colonists in New England were being killed. This was certainly the opinion of Thomas Paine, a recent immigrant from Britain. Early in 1776, Paine published Common Sense, a 47-page pamphlet that made a fervent case for independence. It declared that nobody should be ruled by a king. Paine wrote, Monarchy and succession have laid the world in blood and ashes. Paine mocked the idea that Britain should rule the American continent. He argued that British rule had only brought harm to the colonies, declaring that colonial trade had suffered under British control, and that the colonies had been dragged into Britain's conflicts with other European countries. Paine even proposed the kind of government Americans should set up, a representative democracy, giving roughly roughly equal weight to each colony. His pamphlet was hugely influential. Within three months, 120,000 copies of Common Sense had been sold. Paine's persuasive words fired up the colonists and hastened the movement toward independence. Enlightenment ideas inspire change. Paine's pamphlet helped spread ideas that were already popular among patriot leaders. Those ideas stem from the Enlightenment, an intellectual movement of the 1600s and 1700s that greatly influenced the colonies. Enlightenment thinkers stressed the value of science and reason, not only for studying the natural world, but also for improving human society and government. The writings of English philosopher John Locke particularly influenced patriot thinking. Locke believed that people enjoyed natural rights to life, liberty, and property. Furthermore, he said that governments and citizens are bound by a social contract. People agree to obey their government if it respects their natural rights. If the government fails to do so, people have the right to overthrow it. The Colonies Declare Independence As their meeting continued in Philadelphia, many members of the Second Continental Congress had these Enlightenment ideas in mind. On June 7, 1776, Richard Henry Lee of Virginia introduced a resolution proposing independence for the colonies. The Lee Resolution led to a formation of a committee to draft a Declaration of Independence. This committee was made up of Thomas Jefferson of Virginia, Roger Sherman of Connecticut, Benjamin Franklin of Pennsylvania, Robert Livingston of New York, and John Adams of Massachusetts. The task of crafting the words went to Thomas Jefferson. A gifted writer, Jefferson was also a strong believer in natural rights. The Declaration of Independence reflects this thinking when it lists life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness as unalienable rights the government were created to protect. The Declaration of Independence also states that governments should derive their powers from the consent of the governed, that is, from the people. It asserts that people have the right to alter or abolish a government when it becomes destructive of their rights. To illustrate how destructive Britain's rule had been, the Declaration includes a long list of abuses by the king and his government over the years. It then concludes, These united colonies are, and of right, ought to be free and independent states that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown, and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved. 
and for the support of this declaration with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. On July 2nd, Congress voted for independence by passing the Lee Resolution. Then, on July 4th, it formally approved the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration was later written on parchment for delegates to sign. In effect, they were signing a formal declaration of war against Britain.